Welcome back. How you doing, guys? Podcast 41, I believe. I always worry I'm saying the wrong number, but yeah. Welcome back, guys. How are you doing? Hope you're doing alright. I'm Louise21. I'm back for another podcast. Slight delay since the last one. I've been making videos in between. I've been... Have I been live streaming? Well, I was live streaming until my PS4 decided to act its age, well, seven years, you know, and start overheating on me and dying every time I'm trying to, trying to go online. So I haven't live streamed in a week or so. Weather's been good again, been great. I have to say, guys, that I actually went to a restaurant for the first time in six months yesterday, guys. It was strange, yes, but you know all this talk of, like, people forgetting all their social skills? Well, that's rubbish, because... I didn't forget any of those. You know, you're in a restaurant, like, people got them. People said you'd forget how to be normal. But how is that possible? I don't know if that is possible. Anyway, today's podcast is kind of about, like, believing in yourself, you know. Um, they say that as human beings, we say over a thousand. <laughs> what the hell? There's a ghost, guys. That chair just slipped. Oh my, that is scary. What the hell? I'm seeing ghosts right here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I was about to say, in life, on a daily basis, the average person will say over a thousand negative things about themselves. And, you know, maybe saying one or two good things could change that. How you wake up in the morning. I'm not saying brush your teeth and say, I'm the greatest in the mirror, repeatedly, no. But you know, we're going to get into it today guys, we're going to get into into some proper chat, some real talk. So roll the intro and I'll see you back here in one moment. to free and we're back <laughs> brilliant it's a bit windy guys so the wind may annoy you slightly in this video I chose to not have the fountain in the pond on because that makes a lot of noise yeah it was nice but it was too much I realized in editing I was like okay it didn't come out how I thought it would but yeah so I want to say it was strange going back to a restaurant for the first time since February, six months, so weird, <laughs> everyone wearing masks as they go in, so you can't eat with your masks on, who knows what you should or shouldn't do, but I do know that we should have been wearing masks from a long time ago, forget what Boris, I don't, I don't know what Boris is on, he's doing his best, he's trying, let him try, you know, but he's the clown of Europe really, like watching everyone else make decisions and stick with them and he just dilly dallied around I don't know and the whole thing with the think about the NHS yeah you wanted to, I've heard rumours about this think about it logically yeah he kind of wanted us to all clap for the NHS and carers and everyone so they would feel more valued instead of actually giving them more money more pay better pay that they deserve for risking their lives nowadays, um, but obviously he didn't, he's not giving them that. Obviously not going to get that now with all the economy being how it is. And I'm just worried about my summer holidays not being so good because of this. And that's selfish, really. That's like it's not the end of the world. You miss your holiday one year, stay local. You know, so much of the UK I haven't seen. I'm yet to explore. Um, my parents. They want to, yeah, they want to go to Scotland, but it's cold in Scotland even now. Maybe not now, but you know, in general. God, I haven't got the patience to drive to Scotland, let alone Italy. Well, I've done Italy pl plenty of times, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. We'll see. Ev everything seems to change from one day to the next. Who knows? 
but yeah, to get onto the subject of the podcast, you know, it's like there's a thousand negative things most people say about themselves in a daily basis. Like, yeah, I'll probably call myself an idiot a fair few times and say, okay, your videos need to get better. The cat's meowing. <laughs> That's so annoying. The cat's annoying me now. That's weird. That's weird. Everyone's disturbing me from ghosts to moving that chair, you know, and the cat. Yeah. But think about it, like, four or five positive things can change your attitude throughout the day. But people do say a lot of negative things about themselves and or think them. A lot of stuff that isn't true, maybe. Maybe some of it is sometimes. Depends who you're asking. But, you know, just wake up in the morning, maybe try and give yourself five compliments or two, you know. This cat is being annoying now. You want food? Meow. I don't speak cat. He's on the chair next to me. He's going to join us for this podcast. The cat podcast. No. But anyway, yeah. So for this podcast, you join me in the garden. Once again, in this lovely weather. And so, yeah, I mean, it's hard to have a positive force all the time. You can't. If every day was good, then and there wasn't bad days, like, then everyone would be fine and happy and good at everything. Like, that would be boring. Like, the bad days make the good days good. I've heard that before. Those days where you just wake up and you, like, don't want to get out of bed, you just want to stay in bed all day. I get those days. Or I'm just physically tired some days. Um, everyone gets those days. And if you don't, you're not human, I don't think. I'm sure you've had one of those days, or many of those days in the last six months where you just had a pyjama day. I've never, I admit, I've probably never done that. Even when I do all nighters in Italy, I still can't sleep. Like if I go into bed at eight in the morning after being up all night, not that I do that on the regular, but I do that in Italy at least once or twice a year. And when I do, I can't sleep in the daytime. Don't want to waste precious light. You know? So I miss like a day of sleep. That's it. Maybe get a nap in the afternoon, but like... Nah. I forgot what I was saying anyway. Oh yeah, positive and negative stuff. But yeah. It's... It's strange. Because like on a normal day, it's like... Oh, I've got to go to work, all this, for normal people. But during lockdown, it's been different. A lot of people still work though, as well. So not everyone's had all this time to think and regroup and gather your thoughts and not everyone sees it that way you know I haven't done nothing in this lockdown time some people might have some people might have worked harder than ever in certain industries like at the restaurant I went to yesterday speaking to them there one night they, they had to make over 20 like over 200 pizzas and that, that was a lot like all the takeaways they were getting orders for and pretty busy last night to be honest everyone's well separated you know the waiters are wearing masks one of them was wearing the visor you know and we're back slight camera malfunction as always but yeah even that like I, was, I would have been saying negative things to myself in that moment like now when the camera went off I would have been like get a new camera you're cheap all this um, I'm quite tight yeah I'll, I'll be honest people wouldn't think that um, I'm nice till you get to know me, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I just hope I can go to Italy. If I don't, it's not the end of the world. It's annoying. Um, and I, knowing, not knowing whether my parents will have to quarantine when we get back and lose out on business. Two weeks of business. It's not possible, really. It wouldn't be good for anyone. Um, but even me, like, well, I can't, well, technically, what's the difference? Two weeks compared to six months. What difference does it make? But no, in this time of lockdown, like, mental health has been a, at the forefront of a lot of people's talking points and a lot of people's minds, you know, worrying about the mental health of people. And, yeah, it's been difficult and strange. And, like, socially it's been difficult, yeah. 
but I don't think for me it's been all bad. It's been yeah, a bit stir crazy at times being at home all the time, but it's not been overly bad. Like the time to think about things and really consider what I'm doing here on YouTube. The end goal, you know, just if I make a difference to one person, that's all that matters. Really, I don't care about the millions or the thousands, you know, and not making money as such on this. That's not. That's not. That shouldn't be your your overall aim. It may, well, maybe it is for some people. Like, why do you, you know? I ask a lawyer, do you care about law or do you want to make money? Well, I don't know. Maybe they care about law, but some people care about money more than their job. Certain jobs, you know. Think, uh, think about a guy in a normal job, like office job, right? For example, like maybe he, uh, you know, has a nice car. That he drives to work every day and something classic and loud with a gearbox where you actually change gears yourself with a gearbox right most most cars have a gearbox anyway so a man a car like a muscle car like he drives to work every day imagine this random guy with an average job he, he hates his job with a pure passion but that 20 minutes drive to work he puts on a, a bit of music and shifts those gears revs the engine you know and he feels good in that moment and he knows that six seven hours time after a day's work he's going to get back in that car go home and do the same thing and that's the highlight of his day in lockdown you don't get that don't get any you don't get the good or the bad of your day just get the day and for me it didn't make a difference because i had could still talk to you guys could still vlog. I've seen YouTubers that took a break throughout the whole thing. Well, YouTubers that rely on going out to do their vlogs. Ma mainly ones that do like BMX videos where they go on their bike around town. You know, that would have had to stop for some people. But for me, no. I kept working, kept going at it. I've done a lot more gaming, a lot more live streaming. And that was one of, one of my goals at the beginning of the year. And I've done that, so I've done a lot of things. But day to day, I'm going to criticise myself a lot. I think we all are. I can only speak from my own point of view, but I always want to do better. It's in human nature. Maybe I'm good at something. Maybe I'm good at talking, I don't know. I don't think I'm anywhere near good at talking. Ask Joe Rogan, you know, top podcaster, like commentator, you know. His life is talking, and he does it really well. Do we all do it so well? I don't know. That's who I look up to in the world of YouTube when I do a podcast. Probably why I started them. Uh, vlogs are different, a bit more random, a bit more in the moment. But I like to think deep sometimes. I do, I do quite a lot of the time, actually. Whether, whether people realise it or not. Um, and lockdown makes you do that more. I've always been a person who just thinks a lot about things, overthinks them, and then comes out with negative stuff. You know, don't overthink things. <laughs> um, strange though. I never thought I'd be on YouTube, but um, yeah, you still find the negative things. People nitpick at their own personality, they always want to improve. But you just got to be yourself. Like, there's too much self censorship in the world, and Twitter and Instagram and all these platforms censoring you and stopping you from being yourself. If you're a horrible person and treat people like crap, then that's different, but the rest of us. It's how you express art through being who you are, not being who other people want you to be, um, which can have a negative effect. You know, just say what, say to yourself what you're good at. Like, for me, it could, could vary, but, you know, I say, like, mental toughness I've got, you know. I make vlogs on a daily basis. I work hard, edit my own vlogs, film them myself, think of the ideas myself, you know. I'm making something good out of what i got, basically, you know. And some people, a lot, everyone thinks about how they want to be remembered, you know, write a book or something, you know, to really express what, what you feel. I thought I'd do that visually through YouTube. Um, and trying to keep it real, not always the case, so like, 
some podcasts I'll look back on and be like, what was I on about? Why was I so worried about what people thought? And you shouldn't be. Like, don't write your personal opinions on Facebook all the time. I've learned that, I've said that in the past. Because that's going to get you in trouble and cause an argument. I've done it before. It's caused, caused arguments in this lockdown, probably. One time I remember that like, I talked about all the, the BLM protesting and I was like, if I wasn't at risk, I'd be out there protesting too. And then someone got offended and like commented on it and yeah. And I feel guilty for that in some ways. In some ways, I don't. Because I said what I said. And it was from the heart. Caring about something more than your own life, like in some ways. You know? But then that would, in a way, that would be selfish because I would be putting other people in danger. Well, mainly myself. And then, like, think about one person. If they come to harm, everyone around them feels that more. You know what I mean? So for the sake of everyone around me, you know what I mean? I wouldn't... I, I didn't do that. I mean, I might have if I wasn't at risk. Who knows? <laughs> but I can't afford to think if I was this, if I was, a, you know, if I was everybody. No, I don't think... It's a plane. I don't think about the ifs or the buts and the maybes. <laughs> I do facts. No. That's that Liverpool fan, isn't it? Oh, uh, this reminded me of a TikTok. Anyway. <laughs> no, I don't think about what I could have done. I think about what I'm doing. Like, if I was everybody, maybe I'd be less of a real person, real talker. No. Talk, you know. Like I'm doing, maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'd be in some boring job in a suit every day. In an office or something. And maybe I'd be rich. Uh, well, I don't know. But, I mean... The system is designed for the same people to be poor because it is like they, they'd rather we stayed at home, got our benefits and shut up. That was it. Like if I'm being honest, for the government, you know, and the lock lockdown has treated the same people probably the worst. Let alone the NHS, even though we're clapping for them, you know. So I think about that and it just it kind of. It annoys me, but like, like I'm saying, I don't regret anything. Like, obviously, I can't change anything. You know what I mean? So what? So why, why think about what could have been? Why not just get on with it and just work on myself? But like I said, lockdown has been strenuous on a lot of people. It, any any household, it would be family. You know, being Italian is just eating and eating and drinking. Yeah, I mean, I've learned that I cannot play Fortnite or FIFA or any game for that matter after a glass of wine well, or two or three. That's what I've learned now. And speaking of that, I did I did a podcast after a few drinks once. Didn't really, well, I spoke my mind, that's for sure. And I was proud of that one, I kind of. Like, in the moment, you've, it's different to when you look back at it. But, like, anything I... Maybe I regret some videos on YouTube, but like, not these kinds, not the podcast really. Maybe I'm like, what was I doing there? But I don't regret as such. No, you got to live without regret. Maybe you do have regrets and that'll teach you to do something better in the future. Well, not regrets, I mean mistakes. It's more mistakes that you can learn from than regrets. I don't know, it's a strange time because who would have thought six months ago we'd be in the position we are now? And think, oh, things were opening, aren't things were opening? Masks, no masks, you know. It's been putting things in perspective for me. It makes you appreciate life a lot more. I always did, to be honest, but a lot more. And yeah, I wouldn't have thought this all last year. Like, I might have gone out more last summer if I knew how it was going to go this summer. Might have saved at the moment. I've gone on holiday for six months. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lived in Italy for a bit. We're better off there, to be honest. I just want to see how it will be in Italy when I go there, like the masks or no masks. Most people are wearing masks more than here. From earlier on, they were wearing masks. And yeah, I'm not going on the plane, though. I do not want to go on the plane. 
that's the worst possible outcome to go on a plane. Circulated air that's like in a tube full of other people breathing. Nah. If someone's got it, you got it if you're in there. Some people say it's better because it's like recycled air. I don't know. I don't know. But if the risk is there on a bus and on the train, the risk is there on a plane. That rhymes. <laughs> I'm an MC today, guys. <laughs> I got those bars. But yeah, speaking of bars and rappers and MCs, uh, Logic released his new album, No Pressure, which I want to talk about now, but I don't really, because I want to make a video only about that, like an album review. But while I'm here, I'm going to read some of the, the lyrics, actually, to the final song on his album which is a speech by Orson Welles. Um, now, if you don't know who Orson Welles is, I'm going to look him up, just for you. I know who he is, but... He is... I always thought he was British, but he's actually American. Yeah, so George Orson Welles was an, an American actor, director, writer and producer. He was remembered for his innovative work in radio, theatre and film. He's considered one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Definitely. So yeah, let's check the lyrics now. So Logic, aka Young Sinatra, Bobby Hall, as he's better known, he recently had a kid, and... Yeah. So, I think... No, it's cha it changes you when you have a kid. You become a... That's what really makes a man a man. I'm not saying you're less of a man without a kid, but that will make you love something more than yourself to be a father and he is logic that is so anyway he used this speech of uh, Orson Welles in the final song and it's, well, it's not really a song is it but it's called Obediently Yours uh, it's, it's too long for me to read it all I'll read it all in, in an album review probably but so it goes I've spoken these words before but not on the radio to be born free is to be born in debt to live in freedom without fighting slavery. To profiteer. I have met southerners who expect an, a fear of a black insurrection. I see no purpose in withholding this from general discussion. There may be those within that outcast 10% of the American people who someday strike back at their oppressors but to put down that a mob a mob would rise so what you're saying you know to stop those people doing that would cause more chaos so then he goes on to say to say i'd like to ask please who will put down that mob i'm an overpaid producer with pleasant reasons to rejoice and i do in the whole awesome practicality of the profit system. But surely my right to having more than enough is cancelled if I don't use that more to help those who have less. I owe the very profit I make to the people I make it from. If this is radicalism, it comes automatically to most of us. In show business, it being generally agreed that any public man owes his position to the public. I owe my position to you guys. But yeah, going on. That's what I meant when I say I'm your obedient servant. We must each day earn what we own. A healthy man owes to the sick all that he can do for them. An educated man owes to the ignorant all that he can do for them. A free man owes to the world's slaves all that he can do for them. And what is to be done is more, much more, than good works. Christmas baskets, bonuses and tips, and bread and circuses. This is the only thing to be done with slaves. Free them. Amazing. And that was like, however many years ago, that was like in the 60s or 50s or whenever. Or even earlier. But that's amazing. Like, and it goes on to talk more about like racism and stuff. 
and it's things we're going through today and the whole thing gets you thinking gets you appreciating what you got and thinking what you're supposed to do for others you know and I think I owe it to you guys you know I'm not saying uninspired people but because like, I, I can get inspired easily by things I want to inspire others so it's my job to help do that I guess to inspire the uninspired I don't know maybe I'm not doing that maybe I'm just talking rubbish all the time but I'm doing it regardless and that's the thing whether it is making a difference or not it is but maybe you don't feel that yourself maybe I don't feel like I'm making a difference but I know I am in some ways when I get people telling me don't don't stop YouTube or, uh, why would I uh, when I, I probably considered that many times like what's the point get a, you know go out and get a job but I did my fair share fair share of job searching and here we are 2020 three years after I started and yeah it's just the beginning really you, to be good at anything we're back yeah again the camera went off but like I was saying Joe Rogan is a podcaster has thousands of hours of podcast and talking with different people from different areas of expertise and me doing countless hours of research for each podcast, you know. You know, and I just talk from the heart, but like, like the whole thing I'm trying to say is that the longer you work at something, the better you'll be at it. And he is brilliant at talking because he does it so much in everything he does it, on different subjects. And I speak more about my own life experience. Um, more than other stuff that I know, I know. But Google's always here to help. Trust me, Joe Rogan uses that too. Uh, but he's got Jamie to do all his research. It's like he reads his mind, he knows what he's thinking, and looks it up. <laughs> and he gets onto the most random topics. Like I watched the uh, Post Malone one recently. All three and a half out, well, almost four hours. Yeah, four hours. And it's just intriguing. Regardless of who he's interviewing. Obviously I watched it because of Post Malone, but... Regardless, uh, it's interesting to see what he says. And even though I don't know the guest, I come to know the guest through watching four hours of them talking with Joe. And... Yeah, he's... Even he probably feels like he could do better, you know. We all get that. And he said that in the past, like... But physic in his case, there's a lot of physical exercise to get, keep keep his mind on. I guess I don't know. No. Switch off really does the physical exercise, but there's not nothing more motivational than being physically healthy. You know, physically fit. I don't do that. I exercise the mind in different ways. You know, in my free time, I do a bit of gaming. Sometimes that's a workout. Depends what game you're playing. Call of Duty. You'll be sweating, so it is a workout. Or Fortnite. Um, but yeah, you do something long enough, you will be good at it. Depends, actually. Depends what you're doing, but yeah. In most things. And will things ever get back to normal? We don't know. How long, we're kind of in limbo, aren't we? Like, lockdown or not, you know. In some ways, I'm not, like, not saying it's better, but... Right now, I'd rather, well, I'm not rather we'd be in lockdown, but, like, it's probably safer to be in lockdown. But who wants that again? The economy don't need that. But who cares about the economy? People's lives matter more, surely. To me, anyway. Than about this government. Who knows? <laughs> We've got a clown in charge. And, yeah, Kanye West. I said it in the past, he's gone mad. Oh God, no, he hasn't gone mad. He's having another episode because he is bipolar. And we have to accept that. And the media is going mad saying, oh, last month he said he wanted to be president. Now he's going crazy now. He never wanted his daughter, that, you know, he wanted to abort his daughter. Blah, 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 all this. But he, he is going through bipolar. It's a condition it's connected to depression. Um, and yeah, people just 
going overboard, like saying that he times it perfectly with re the release of the new album. No, he just seems to become more vocal when he has new albums in general, and it just coincides with his bipolar, which maybe is just, it's just connected. I don't know. But yeah, people just attack people too much, especially with this cancel culture. You know, I'm not scared of being cancelled. I'm just scared of like copyright strikes, but like, I'm not on that level where I'm scared of being cancelled. Maybe you have to be careful what you say, but I want to be. I want to speak from the heart and be real. You know, and being in the time we're in now, honesty is difficult to find. And real talk in Corona, like, in, like when we're so, when the world has this COVID problem, you know. It's difficult to enjoy anything without feeling guilty and saying, why am I doing this? People dying. But what are you going to do? Imprison yourself and just drown in self pity? No. You just got to open up to the world again, like, try and get some normality back. Because before we know it, we could be in lockdown again. And we don't know. People are scared. Oh, don't say that. Oh, don't wish bad thing, you know. Who cares? I mean, I don't want to be in lockdown again, but if it means saving lives, then we'll do it. But we lost so much already that nobody thought it would be this bad. But here we are. But moving on to other subjects, Mike Tyson is coming back to boxing. He's fighting another fighter who is also retired. Uh, his name I'll look for. Hey Siri. Who is Mike Tyson fighting? Okay, I found this on the web for who is Mike Tyson fighting. Check it out. Okay, so he will be fighting Roy Jones Jr. Okay, in September. No. I don't know when, but he will be. Oh, no, hold well on. He announced it, I don't know when the fight is, so it's definitely soon. But on the other card, there's Jake Paul against a retired basketball player. So that's going to be crazy. But who cares? I hate Jake Paul. Used to be a fan, of, not really. I'm a fan of Logan, don't get me wrong. I mean, for the bad, bad things he's been known for. But yeah, side men and KSI come first. Like, that's it. Like KSI beats Jake Paul to a pulp, whenever that is, we'll see, <laughs> and that, that's crazy though, like, he's the craziest guy on YouTube, there's a lot of weird people including me, but Jake Paul, nah, like it's not for kids anymore what he does, and it, yeah, nobody can stand him anymore, all the kids that used to like him have probably grown up, the next generation are more obsessed with TikTok and you know people like that who seem to be taken over or YouTubers jumping on TikTok or celebrities you see a lot of them now I'm enjoying TikTok I'll be honest please don't cancel it um, they're saying Microsoft want to buy TikTok and then they're gonna kind of re reshape it a bit like they're gonna censor it more basically they're censoring the world too much. Can't censor the world. I think that was like a either Family Guy or Simpsons episode where someone censored real life. Can't censor real life. Nobody's censoring me. That's why I keep it real. Or try to. And it'll be good to do vlogs that aren't just in the park though. I enjoy those a lot. I'll go around town a bit more. Try and go to a pub. Annoyingly, you have to book, but obviously, that's the world we live in now. Well, maybe you can just turn up, but I doubt it. If you can turn up at a Costa Coffee or a Starbucks or anywhere like that, but you can't turn up at a pub, well, they don't want an overflow of people. I understand that, but I want my drink. I've been drinking enough at home, but pub, man. And maybe it's not where it's at for now till it gets back to normal. But when will it ever? Will it ever? Like, obviously restaurants 
before you didn't have to book for many. Now almost every restaurant you have to book. Maybe not Nando's, but restaurants you have to book because they want to know who you are. They want they want they need your details. You know, like contact tracing, which helps. My parents are even doing that in, at work. They've got almost details of like almost every client, and it it helps because if someone does have it, then you got you got all their details. So it's fine. But, yeah, for me, just trying to take it slow, you know, take one day at a time, whatever Boris says, who knows what he's going to say next. Don't get my hopes up for a holiday. I don't know. Should I? A man can dream, Connie, but that would be a great vlog, driving to Italy. I mean, drove to Italy last year in April. That was the first time I vlogged it, but I didn't vlog it very well, I just, I don't know, I can't remember if I vlogged much of it, a bit of it, but I need to do that better, it's difficult out of the window of a car, trying to film the Alps, that you can see it in front of you, but it's inspiring, and when you see those things, it just makes you realise, God, I am small, I'm a, I'm a speck in the universe, you look up at this mountain or whatever, or this river or lake, or like the water coming off a mountain, down some stream. It's like awe inspiring and it brings you back to nature, like connects you to to nature. Am I getting weird now? <laughs> I don't care. But yeah, something humbling about it. So I look forward to seeing that if I can. If all the borders don't close. But maybe they won't well they won't, but the big thing is quarantine or not when we get back. But yeah, I've driven to Italy many times and even when I go on holiday I like I have to vlog now. I kind of feel like I'm missing if I don't I'm missing something if I don't. Maybe it's an addiction but I want to document everything and share it. It's just how I am. And some people are more private than me. My brother's completely opposite, like he doesn't agree with me talking so much so openly about things anything that involves him especially like I don't agree with it, well fair enough but I'm the opposite, I like to share with the world you know you've got one life, you know, might as well share it can't just be closed off about everything if you like, you know got to be emotional you got to be real <laughs> you know, just being yourself I think is the best way to be creative uh, don't get too comfortable either. If you're comfortable, then it's going to stunt your creativity. I'm fearful that I'm too comfortable at times. Got to go out of your comfort zone a bit. Step out of that box. And I've got to not be afraid to be censored, you know. Like, don't censor life. You can't censor life. You know. And lockdown can't stop us from doing that. I mean, it's made it difficult, that's for sure. Made it, made it strange and made you think twice about everything. About how hygiene, wash your hands all the time, all this. You know, it's simple stuff. But they somehow, we need to be told how to wash our hands. Because apparently some people don't know that. And like, come on. Like, what kind of world are we living where parents aren't teaching their kids how to wash hands? Come on. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I learned that as the first thing I learned, probably, as a kid. To wash your hands. I'm quite obsessive, anyway. I'm probably a bit OCD about things. And it's like a need to control things. Like, I want to control too much. And obviously, I can't control opinions of people. Nobody can. So just quite care about what they say but like in life I'm trying to control I think it's just it comes with the lifestyle I don't know with I don't know not every disabled person is that obsessive but there is a need to control things because there's so much we can't control so you always want to control something in your life so you'd be about very uh, like possessive about things very OCD about things unnecessary things 
and I admit it too, and God, my parents are on me about it, my brother especially, but everyone has the the thing that they do that annoys other people. I, I just probably, yeah, I do talk too much, so I'm fueling that and transferring that into putting it on camera. So then when my brother does get home, I'm not going to chew his ear off about my opinions about things. Did you hear this and did you see that? Because I've talked enough on here. And he'd be like, why aren't you talking? You're right. Because <laughs> normally I'm, I'm, I could talk for Italy or England or whoever. <laughs> if I ever get that Italy passport I applied for last year, obviously that went all tits up because of Covid and lockdown. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully I'll get it at some point, I don't know. Well, it's just there, in Italy, waiting. But yeah, family over there are just so eager for us to go over and we're like, listen, nothing's in stone, nothing's guaranteed, nothing is set in stone. You know, can't guarantee we're going to come, though we'd want to. Um, but like I said, so yeah, before the camera went off, I was about to say, you know, you prepare, you, no, was it, I had it, damn, you hope for the best, prepare for the worst, you know, think about that, you always want to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst scenario, like, makes sense. You know, I'd do that every hospital visit. <laughs> and sadly I couldn't get one of them in before I went away, like my usual checkup. Because the ward where I go has been moved somewhere else. Originally where I, I went to have these overnight uh, visits that I do. Um, that ward they use for COVID patients. So they moved it somewhere else. But I don't want to go anywhere near a hospital right now. No way, are you kidding me? Don't want anywhere near a hospital. No. No way. No, no, no. Like, the last place you want to be. <laughs> Jeez. It's kind of funny though, speaking of hospitals, because uh, a good friend of mine works at a local hospital. Not in the COVID bit, hopefully, thankfully. Um, but yeah, he passed on the bus while I was at the restaurant last night. He texted me, he's like, how's... Uh, our frescoes. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I saw you, I passed by on the bus. I was like, oh, you little stalker. <laughs> no. But it's funny, like, the minute I go out, people spot me. Can't miss me. I mean, uh, it's not one of those things you're going to just... I'm not one of those people you're going to just miss in a crowd, you know? Pretty unique. And that is what I live off, being unique. And I got my mask with the skeleton on it, like, scares a lot of people off. <laughs> like, they're going to keep more than two metres, for sure. <laughs> uh, I, I am probably a bit vain. And I was, like, I was thinking from my last video that I made about social media, the addiction of it. I'm addicted to it too, I'm addicted to posting stuff. Um, I post too much. But yeah, I was talking about it, so how could I really understand it? Or be fair in what I'm saying if I'm kind of contradicting what I'm saying. But we're all addicted to social media in some way. Some sort of seek for attention. Quest for attention. And, you know, seeking attention. People do it in person, but some people just do it on social media. Or they have this big opinion on Twitter, they'll say, get really leery, but in real life, their, you know, their bark is worse than their bite. I think I'm the opposite. No, my bark is pretty bar bad. But yeah, my my bite is worse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, no, little kids bite people. I remember my brother used to bite. He was a biter. Oh dear. And he used to pull my hair. Ouch. <laughs> but like. I've still got hair, so didn't pull it all out. But yeah, it's it's difficult not having bad things to say about yourself. 
not being negative, like, we've all been there. <laughs> but, and then I say too much positive stuff, and I'm like, I'm getting cocky now, don't get cocky. Then I say something negative to make myself more humble in some ways. Like, think you can do better all the time. Because that will fuel your passion and make you work harder. If you think, oh yeah, that's perfect, nothing doing there, don't need to do any better, then what's the point of anything? Like, anyone who gets to the top, once you get there, the only fear is being knocked off. But when you're at the bottom working your way up, you know, you know that the guy on the top can fall off at any time. And you're at the bottom working your way up still, regardless. <laughs> That's how I feel, but I've achieved a lot, but a lot more to achieve. There's always more, and you've got, you've got to be willing to learn and be curious about things that you don't know much about. Like I said, I want to learn more about other things. And yeah, that, this album I heard by Logic um, was very inspiring. By the, the position he is in, in his life, being a father and people thinking he's going to retire from rapping, being only 30, or 31 or 32, and anyway, quite young still. You know, why would you quit something that early? But he wants to be focused and committed to raising his son, obviously. Rightly so, as every man, the kid would be. You know, that's normal. So I respect him for that, I respected him anyway. The last 10 years of his music, you know. It's brilliant music, like, it's... it's humbling and inspiring at the same time, that kind of music. A lot of hip-hop is like that, but of course it's not my only type of music that I listen to, you know, varying from Pink Floyd to a few Italian artists to a bit of grime here and there, a bit of drill music. More recently, you know, hip-hop, old, new, whatever, blues, classic rock, you know. I get inspired from all these different types of music different styles but yeah I will do a view a full review video on that album at some point this week you'll see it first but I know this is going to take ages to upload this this podcast I'm dreading it I am dreading it but we'll see I'll give it a go and when it's up it's up will be a week late but yeah I want to thank you guys. That is the end of yet another podcast. 40 of these we've done, or 41. I don't know. But stay up, stay humble. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay safe, guys. Wear a mask where you're supposed to. Wherever that is. And until next time, peace.